Okay, this is going to be part eight of the series on improper integrals. And in the first seven videos, we dealt with this. We did improper integrals where the limits of integration were infinite. So you had infinite limits of integration. Now, another type problem within uh, improper integrals involves infinite discontinuities. And when you're working with infinite discontinuities, you'll get three, these three rules right here. Now, if you've watched the first seven videos, and I definitely suggest you do that, um, you'll be familiar with the form of these rules, and the rules for infinite discontinuities look similar, but there are some differences. So first of all, let's take a look at the difference uh, between the two types of problems. Now, really, the first uh, seven videos work with this. There were infinite limits of integration. So the problems look like this. You had a function f of x, and you were going to find the integral from some fixed point a to infinity. So you went from a maybe out to a positive infinity, and you would find the area under this curve. But that has to do with infinite limits of integration. Now, in that case, what you have is this. Uh, you're actually going off horizontally, and the problem looked like this. So we will call this a horizontal problem. So if you're working with infinite limits of integration, then the problem goes way off to the right or way off to the left, and it's horizontal. Now, another type of improper integral involves this. In this problem, rather than having the limit go off to infinity, you have fixed limits. But the problem is uh, one of the limits involves an asymptote. It could be one or the other, or there's an asymptote in the middle. And this time, the graph itself goes up either to a positive or a negative infinity. So what this means is this time the graph is going to go off vertically and you will have a vertical discontinuity. So you can kind of think of the difference in the two problems is if it's infinite limits of integration and the limit of integration itself is infinity, think of the problem as going off horizontally. If you've got fixed limits of integration, but one of those limits involves an asymptote where the graph itself goes vertically, then that would be a vertical discontinuity. And that's what's called an infinite discontinuity, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. So anyway, just keep in mind, we'll work with asymptotes and having the graph either go up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity. So that's really the basic difference in the two types of problems. So now back to the rules, and let's take a look at it. Now, it still kind of falls in three cases, so let's take a look at this. The first case does this. You want to find the integral from a to b, and graphically it'll look something like this. So in the first case, suppose that the asymptote fell on the right-hand side of the integral. So the asymptote is over here at b. So in this case, we're still going to follow the same two-step process that we used in the first seven videos, and uh, we'll pick some point c and let c approach b to find the total integral. So let's take a look at each case separately and explain kind of where these rules came from. So the first one will look something like this. Okay, now here's what it looks like. You've got a function f of x, and you want to go from a to b, but you have an asymptote over here on the right-hand side. So the graph itself goes up to infinity. Now, it may or may not settle on a fixed number. So again, it may or may not be convergent. And if it settles on a fixed number, it's conversion. If it doesn't, then it's divergent. But you'll follow the same process kind of that we did in the, the first seven videos. So again, hopefully you've watched those. But the idea is this. Um, you can't find the integral if it goes off to infinity. So what you have to do is come in here and pick a definite integral that you can evaluate. So just like you guys did in the first seven videos, just come in here and somewhere between A and B, pick a point C and you'll evaluate this black interval, so a two-step process. So first of all, find the area between A and C, which will give you this area right here. So you're going to find just the area from A to C, and you've got that. Then once you've got that, then move to step two, and what step two says is now find the limit as C approaches B from the left. So you're going to let the point C slide toward B from the left, and that will pick up this additional area over here, and then you'll have the solution to your problem. So again, if the, inner, if the asymptote is on the right-hand side, pick a point C and take the limit as C approaches B from the left. So that's the first type problem. 
Now let's look at the next type. Okay, on the next type problem, suppose the asymptote is over here on the left-hand side. Now you're going to kind of follow the same process. The idea is this time pick a point C in the middle and let C approach A from the right-hand side. Other than that, the process would be exactly the same. So if the asymptote is on the left-hand side, let's take a look at that. Okay, same type problem, but the asymptote's over here. Now again, you'll do the same thing. You've got to pick a definite integral that you can evaluate. So just come in here somewhere and pick a point C. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go to right about here, um, pick a point C. Now, when you evaluate this black integral right here, that's going to give you this definite integral in here. So you'll have this area. But you want the entire area. So once you've got the solution to the black part of the problem, that'd be step one, then move to step two, which says take the limit as C approaches A from the right. So let C get closer and closer to A from the right, and you'll pick up this additional area over here, and you'll have a solution to the problem. So it's kind of the reverse of what case one was. So in a case two problem, the asymptote will be on the left-hand side. And now let's take a look at the final possibility. Okay, and the final possibility, you do have this. Rather than having the asymptote on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side, suppose that the asymptote was somewhere in the middle between the two. So you've got a fixed point A and a fixed point B, but there's an asymptote somewhere in the middle, and the graph uh, could go either up or down toward infinity. Well, let's take a look and see what that one's going to look like. Now, in this case, really, it kind of comes down to two parts. You'll split it up into two parts, and let's go back and we'll take a look at this thing here. So... Pick a sample problem that look like this. So you want the integral from A to B, but somewhere in the middle, you've got an asymptote, and the graph goes off to either positive or, in this case, negative infinity. Now, the trick to problems is, is very similar to what you guys did in those first seven videos. Uh, pick just some point, point. we'll pick the asymptote in the middle, and we'll call that a point C. So the idea is to do this, split it up into two parts. Find the integral from A to C, which is going to give you this area in here. And then in a separate problem, work out as two separate problems, find the integral from C to B, which will give you this area up in here. And then add the two areas together and you'll have the final answer. Now you'll follow the same process that you did in case one and case two, but the idea is to split it apart, solve each part separately, and you'll get the final solution. So that looks like this thing right here. So if you've got A to B and the asymptote is somewhere in between the two, then split it up into two problems. First of all, find it from A to C, this part over here. Then find it from C to B, this part over here, and add the two of them together. But also, finally remember, just like in the first seven videos, all this stuff only applies if uh, the integral is convergent. If the limit settles on a fixed number, so we'll kind of just remind you of that down here at the bottom. Uh, is the problem convergent or divergent? So as you solve the problem, if the limit settles on a fixed single number, then you have a fixed area, and it's a convergent problem, and you've got a solution. If the limit does not settle on a fixed number, if the limit is infinite, then the problem is divergent, and you can't evaluate it to get a specific area. So what that is, that's just to look at the rules now, in the next video, we'll work uh, one of each of the three cases here and show you what the problems look like.